plastic waste accumulation. Qualified in the Alberta lab. Diana Martinez Tobon, University of Alberta, Canada. How would you feel if I told you that you are the lucky winner of an all inclusive vacation in Hawaii, but your resort is located in Camilo Beach? My name is Diana Martinez, and I'm here to talk about how bacteria combined with protein engineering can break the wall of the unmanageable amount of plastic that our consuming society releases every day. Each of us use a lot of products that come in a plastic package. Multiply that by 7 billion, the world population, and you understand the scale of the problem. We hear about biodegradable bags and bottles, but most of those biodegradable materials are just conventional polymers that can break thanks to toxic additives or bioplastics that can break, that break into harmless compounds, but this takes months or even years. What if we had an alternative? A plastic that can break into harmless compounds at a faster rate. Polyhydroxyalkanoids, or PHAs, are just that. Biopolymers produced by many types of bacteria, commercially available from companies like Metabolix in the US, in the US or Biomer here in Germany. In fact, more and more companies are looking at ways to produce PHA cheaper, so we will be seeing more of these bioplastics in our everyday products. But how does their degradation work? The good news is as there are bacteria that can produce these bioplastics, there are other microorganisms that can use them as their food. By producing a special enzyme that helps them to cut the polymer into smaller pieces to eventually turn it into same products. However, for this enzyme to work at its fullest, it needs special conditions, like certain temperatures, for instance, and this is not always easy to control in an open environment like a landfill. My goal is to make this process more efficient by improving the enzyme through protein engineering. One way to achieve this is by taking the generic material of the enzyme. Then I introduce random changes that produce a lot of new enzymes. Most of them will be worse at degrading the polymer but some of them will be much faster. Another way involves the use of computational tools that help me to figure out specific changes in the DNA to obtain the enzyme with improved degradation rate that can later be used in the environment uh, so that the waste doesn't accumulate for too long. You know, although we try hard, we're not changing our consumption habits fast enough, and neither is industry willing to completely sacrifice profit over the planet's well-being. So we need to hurry up to break the wall of plastic waste accumulation before we spend our future holidays in a beach full of garbage. Thank you. Have you already created enzymes that accelerate the process? Um, uh, right now I'm in the initial stage of my uh, PhD, and we're going. We're, so there are many types of enzymes that can do this. Uh, we're selecting the the best ones that have best uh, rate, and I'm going to start with directed evolution uh, the next month. Very good question. Uh, how long would it take for one gram of material to dissolve for one gram of plastic? Well, it will depend on uh, how the mutations will work, but uh, right now we're, uh, with the natural enzyme, we can degrade around one, 10 milligrams, 25% uh, weight loss in around <coughs> 24 hours, but we hope but this is at the good temperatures, the, the one at there, that's it, and Sam is happy. Thank you very much. <laughs>